and there's one called uh, the monstrous feminine. Those are about these odd periods down through history where there was like bouts of mania, almost bacchanalia like craziness caused out of the, the trauma where we our brains, you know, there was, there was bouts of great insanity. And this accounts for phenomena like in the Greeks talk about the maenads or the bacchanalia in which a bull would be torn to pieces and there's all sorts of anecdotes about castration and women running in the streets and men running in the streets and castrating themselves. It's all there in the history books. How do you explain all of that nonsense? And today in Spain, you get these crazy men running down streets, jumping over the heads of bulls. What, what, what the hell is going on? And where does it all come from? Right? It doesn't look very sane or rational. But that's because we don't know damn all about our origins and what happened in the world. So this trauma then is wheeled out in micro when governments of the world are using this technique because they've learned it. The great priesthoods of the Els, the priesthood of the Illies, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, the Setianatnists, these Masonic orders, they've understood these few common denominators that we're exploring here. And that is that light not only illuminates, but blinds. If I shine a big bright light in your face, I'm hidden from sight. Is that the reason they call themselves the Illuminati then? I call them the princes of light. It's actually what the word Gaionum really means, Exilarx. Well, what do we know about these people? What do we know about the fall of Judaism in, in the actual fall, the historical fall? Do you realize the upset that that caused when the Romans just couldn't take it anymore? They've been pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed by these uh, zealots and these other uh, bizarre boogaloo groups in Judea that had no reason to cause rebellion because all that happened was it was the destruction of their own people. Well, the Romans had warned and warned and warned. But there's something ma maniacal in the religious mind. Don't we know that already? I mean, there's plenty of evidence in history of it. So the governments of the world have understood, keep the rug being pulled because you're stimulating this deeper set anxiety and trauma. You're stimulating, you're keeping it alive by the law of resonance. And you do it like homeopathically, because you don't want to awaken. First of all, you don't want complete insanity to return by awakening the true, you know, the deep, deep trauma is so great that if it ever opens up again, there'll be again psychosis in the world. But but you can you can do it in such a way where it's always what's known as kindling underneath. And that is then a catastrophization feeling that can not only be a pathology on the individual level, like a traumatized person who has PTSD would be the best way to explain it, but it can also be social. And so social hysteria, mass hysteria is one of the least studied things in the world. I make it the center of my work. And the best way to explain it is if you have a car rack on the way to work, then you will do anything to avoid that road again, and even go two, three times further by avoiding that route, you know, and take a much more circuitous route to work or to wherever you are, rather than go down that route road again, where the memory of the trauma uh, it comes back to haunt you. Well, look, that's history. History is exactly that scenario. We've taken extraordinary circuitous routes and conjured up all sorts of shadows and columns and churches and cathedrals and beliefs and gods and demons. The whole of our history is a, is a circuitous route because the other road would remind us too much of the great wound in the psyche. And this is another one of these key pieces we're talking about. Because once you have that, oh, now a lot of other things make sense. Once you, once you really carefully and persistently look at it, and then you'll understand human behavior. And you'll understand that the destabilization that this ancient catastrophism caused, the, the real terrestrial catastrophe, so weakens the ground of consciousness and the psyche that it needs structures to hold on to. And that's where you get religion, the very essence of religion. Now, we did say that it came out of, of wonder first. There's a natural religion, uh, which is based on sun worship and the worship of animals and the worship of the earth in terms of wonder. But that's swept away. That's the original holistic origin of it. But most people don't have that today. It's fear and trauma that replaced that. And the study of religion and its emphasis on structure and its emphasis on a holy book with a bunch of provisos, 10 commandments, 
beatitudes, thou shalt and thou shalt not, has nothing to do with wonder, amazement, and astonishment at the mystery of life. That's true religion. And you can have that now. You can have that by looking at a daffodil, a leaf. That's the real spiritual person who's in communion with the light, who's in communion with his world in a completely different way. But the other type is pathological and psychotic. And the structural aspect becomes essential. That's why you get it. Look at Islam. Look at Judaism. What, what is this nonsense? This is to keep structure so you don't fall apart mentally and emotionally. Look at the Bible bashers. Look at the fundamentalists and how much hate they've got for one another. We don't have one Christ. We don't have one Christianity. We've got a million denominations. How does that come about? That's fracturing. Why are we not got one doctrine? 